I'm Justin Struble with BSG Advisors. I want to talk about three interesting things that are out there. 30-year treasury bonds, growth rate of the country, and inflation. <clears throat> These three are connected, but they're all variables. They all change from time to time. But there's an interesting thing I noticed when I looked at these over the past 40 years. You can take inflation rate, add it to the growth rate of the country, GDP growth, and those typically add up to the interest rate on a 30-year treasury bond. Now, a 30-year treasury bond is the government issuing a bond and paying just the interest over time, and the principal is due 30 years in the future. And so this is as independent as possible it's just the interest rate you're one you're not worried you're not going to get your principal back in five years this is lending over a 30-year period even a home mortgage if, if it's a 30-year loan you've paid it down to zero over those 30 years a 30-year treasury you just pay the interest for 30 years and only that very last payment does the principal get repaid so this is a very uh pure instrument instrument to look at long-term interest rates. And so when we look at it, whether you're looking at the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and even till today, most of the time, inflation plus growth rate equals 30-year treasury yield, the interest rate return on the 30-year treasury note. <clears throat> what we're looking at today in 2022 is very interesting because the 30-year interest the 30-year treasury has a yield of around 3%. We have gross domestic product growth of the country that's estimated 1, 2, 3% in a given year. And we have inflation right now that is high signal digits. The, the interest rate on the I-bonds is almost 10%. Realistically, we're probably seeing somewhere around six seven eight percent inflation right now in most of the economy and that is expected to come down over time but if you say it's six percent six percent plus the growth let's even say it's the country is only growing at one percent that's seven percent yet these 30-year treasuries are paying three percent this is a huge disconnect between the payout of a treasury and what we need it to pay out to be a stable economy seven percent what that tells me is one or two or all three of these variables are going to change over time. <clears throat> Imagine inflation, here's a hypothetical scenario. What if inflation comes down from the six to 8% down to 2%, that, which is the target where the Fed wants it to get? Let's say it gets down to 2%. And then let's say that the growth of the economy is at one and a half percent, which is a slow growth, but not unusual for for the US going forward, it's very possible. That would correlate to saying treasury notes, 30 year treasury should be at three and a half percent. So even in that very conservative figure for inflation and growth of the country, the 30 year treasury needs to be at three and a half, which means there's more push upward. That's very possible. Now, what if we actually, the current inflation we're seeing causes a recession? Well, now we've finally if we fast forward a year, 2023, what if inflation comes down to 4%, but we actually have practically zero growth of the country? So now four. Well, now you'd say 4% should equal 4% on the treasury. Inflation could come down to 2%. It could come down to 1%. We could see deflation or stagflation. It's this struggle where we're just in this disconnect. The point here is there's, there's going to be pain going forward because these numbers aren't matching up right now. And they're way off. We're saying 7% does not equal 3%. We're not saying 3 and 3.5. Three and that, that would be acceptable. But long term, we can't have this disconnect between treasuries paying 3% and the expectations on your dollar being 7%. That's unsustainable. What we're likely to see is some of all of it. Maybe these treasury rates get pushed up from 3 to 3.25%. Three that's a decent push. It's going to hurt a lot of those bondholders that own treasuries. So that's painful just in itself, even a quarter percent. Inflation coming down would be great. That's a good thing because it would get to stability. 
a low single digit is a great place. If we got down to 2% inflation, most people are going to be very happy with that. <clears throat> Growth of the country is really the variable we don't want to go negative on. We don't want a contracting economy. You do that for two quarters and you have a recession. You do that for two years, we have a depression. We don't want to do that to correct these numbers, but it could happen. That's the reality that we're facing is we could have a recession, have two quarters of negative GDP growth or contraction, and that helps offset this inflation rally that we're having. Either way, inflation has got to come down or these treasury notes have to go way up in interest. And not three to three and a quarter to three and a half, we're talking four, five, six. For that to happen, that is extremely painful for the bond market. The bond market is bigger and more sluggish than the stock market. And so that pain will be felt across a lot of financial entities. I don't wanna see it happen because I, there's gonna be reverberation or whatever the right term is of what happened in 2008. This is very similar. It's a reflection, it's a ripple. It's a similar pattern of, of financial constraints passing through the economy. Um, that type of interest rate rise on those long-term treasuries is extremely damaging to the finances of the country and the world. Hopefully, inflation can come down without a lot of pain on the bonds side, the treasury bond rates going up, and hopefully without a contraction of the U.S. economy. It would be painful to see GDP decline over the course of the year. But that might, might be what we happen because we have this disconnect in the country between inflation, growth, and these long-term expectations of yield. I'm Justin Struble. I hope you follow this. I'd love to have another conversation. If you have any interest, I'm with BSG Advisors. We are not brokers or fixers.